Hello, so if you remember in the last video, we defined how to get space in our question uh, so that students could put their answers in a space and then put their final answer on a dotted line down here. Okay. Now, if you remember, the way to do that was using a little bit of code in the preamble, which I gave you, but then effectively use these three lines of code here. So the first line was how much space we want to leave for that question. So how much space we want to leave for students to give their working. So in this case, it was 100 millimeters, but that could be 80 millimeters, 50 millimeters, two millimeters, whatever you like, right? Uh, the second bit of code was creating a dotted line, which we put over on the right, and the length of that dotted line was 35 millimeters. And then finally, we told LaTeX to drop the number of points of that question down here. Now, the thing is, this works, right? So for the next question, what I could do is copy and paste this code and then just change 100 millimeters to be whatever I like. But this is gonna start taking up quite a lot of space and it's gonna take quite a lot of time to do as well. Um, and it's also gonna look really messy, isn't it? If I have to keep on copying and pasting this, these three bits of code or these three lines of code um, for every single question. So what I really wanna do is change this. So instead of typing this three lines of code, I only need to type one command and then it runs these three lines of code for me. And I can do that using something called a macro. So what I'm gonna do is actually copy that. In fact, I'm gonna cut it because I don't want it there. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna put it up here in the preamble. So before the, pre before the begin document, I'm gonna comment it. Okay, really good uh, practice. So I'm just gonna type a macro for the answer line, okay? macro for the answer line. Uh, so the, basically what I'm gonna do is create a new command whereby whenever I type that command, it will just bring up these three lines of code. So it'll run these three lines of code in the background. I don't need to worry about copying and pasting them anymore, okay? So way to do that is to type a new command. So I'm gonna go backslash new command, okay? Now I need to give it two inputs here, okay? So the two inputs I need, so I'm gonna put two sets of curly brackets. First input is what that command is actually gonna be. Okay, so I guess I could call it whatever I like, really. Uh, I guess answer makes sense here. In fact, I'm gonna call it ANS, make it even shorter, because the whole point of this is I don't have to copy and paste and type out loads of stuff e each time. So I'm gonna type ANS. Basically what that means is that whenever I come down here, if I just type backslash ANS, it will run these three lines of code automatically for me. So in actual fact, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put these three lines of code in that second set of brackets. So the second set of brackets is what it's actually gonna run when I type ANS. So actually let's test this out, okay? You can see down here that I've got ANS written, okay? What that should basically do is run these three lines of code, so the V space, the um, dotted line, and the drop points automatically for me, okay? In fact, let me just get rid of that to show you that it's, uh, to just get it back to no space, okay? Now if I type ANS, at the end here, it should run these three lines of code automatically for me, which it does do, okay? So that's nice, okay? And I can keep going through and type ANS every single time. However, at the moment, the way that the code is set up is that every time I type ANS, it's gonna give me 100 millimeters of space every time. That's not necessarily what I want. Sometimes I may only want 50 millimeters. Sometimes I may only want 10 millimeters. I don't always want 100 millimeters of space every single time. So what I can do is define this, define this command dynamically by using inputs, okay? So the inputs go in between the uh, first set of brackets and the second set of brackets. So you see where my cursor is at the moment? First set of brackets is, like I say, what the command actually is. Second set of brackets is the, uh, what the macro is gonna run in the background. So I'm just gonna put a square bracket or set of square brackets in between those two. And what goes in here is a number, and it corresponds to the number of inputs that I can put in. So in this case, I only wanna change the spacing, okay? So I only wanna be able to change whether it's 100 millimeters, 80 millimeters, 50 millimeters, whatever. So I'm only gonna put one input in, so I'm just gonna put a one there. And then wherever I want that input to appear, I'm gonna change that to a number and then the number of the input, okay? So I wanna change it 100 millimeters, to, I want that to change. So I'm gonna put a hash and then one. And what that basically does is it uses input number one in that position there. Okay, so let me show you how this works down here. You can see where I've got ANS. Now I just type my input. And again, I type my input using curly brackets, same as before. But now I can actually change the amount of spacing that goes in here. So let's say, for example, I only want 50 millimeters of space. So I type 50 millimeters in here. That will basically put 50 millimeters up here because it will take the first input and put it there instead. 
So now if I click recompile, it will only give me 50 millimeters of space, okay? And in fact, just to show you, uh, let's change that back to 100 millimeters. Let's change this to get rid of drop points, because remember drop points is all in that macro automatically, yeah? See up here, there's automatically drop points up there, so I don't need to worry about typing drop points every time now. I can just type ANS, which is my macro, and let's change this spacing to be, I don't know, let's change it to be 20 millimeters, okay? So let's recompile this. Okay, cool. So you can see here that for the first question, I get 100 millimeters of space, but for question two part A, I only get 20 millimeters of space to put my answer, okay? Now, this idea of macros, I can actually be a little bit more adventurous, okay? So you can see here, I'm just using ANS, which corresponds to just give me that space, give me a dotted line and give me four marks, okay? But actually I can use different macros to give me different things. For example, let's go new command, okay? And let's type, this time let's change the, uh, let's change the command. So obviously we can't use ANS because we've already got that before. Um, let's use ANS line, okay? So what I'm now gonna do, similar kind of thing to the first macro, I'm still gonna define the amount of space and I'm still gonna put the dotted line and put the number of points but this time I'm gonna put a horizontal solid line across underneath all of that. So let me show you, okay? So here, I'm still gonna only take one input. So I'm gonna put one input in square brackets. Then this is where my macro goes. So I guess I could just copy and paste all of this up here, okay? But now I'm gonna add something. So I'm just gonna put it on a new line. So after drop points, I'm gonna put a line which lasts the full width of the page. So I go backslash full width, Okay, so this will basically last the full width of the page, right? And I'm gonna go no indent. Okay, so basically it won't indent the line at all. You don't necessarily need to put that, but uh, just to be sure, just to be on the safe side. Again, I'm gonna do a little color. So I'm gonna give it gray line, I guess. I think that'll look quite nice. Uh, and I'm just gonna create a rule, okay? And the rule is just gonna be text width. So I'm gonna put rule and then in curly brackets, I'm just gonna put text width. And the second set of curly brackets, I'm gonna put one point, okay? So you notice there's a couple of things going on here. Uh, full width is all in a curly bracket. Then I've got no indent and then the color. And then rule basically accepts two inputs. So these are my two inputs here, which I've highlighted. The first input, first set of curly brackets, is how wide I want that line to be. Here, I just want it to be whatever the text width line is. Okay, so whatever the width of the text is, that's how wide I want my line to be. Second input is how uh, kind of, kind of um, yeah, my, my kind of width of the line, okay? So, sorry, I said width as in text width uh, that way, but the point of the line is basically how thick the line is. That's a better word for it, okay? So now if I come down here and use answer line, okay, so let's change this one here now. Instead of using drop points, let's go ANS line, okay? And let's again define the spacing. So I don't know, let's try, for example, uh, let's try 30 millimeters, I guess. Now if I click recompile, because I'm now using a different macro, which includes that horizontal line across, you can see that just by typing answer line, it also gives me that dotted line, that horizontal solid line underneath as well. So you can fiddle around with different macros. And of course, if you wanted more inputs, perhaps we'll show you that in the next input, in the next uh, video, but effectively you just change the number of inputs here. Okay, so actually using macros is a really efficient way of using this document. Okay, and it's particularly useful if you're gonna create a template because it means you don't need to copy and paste these lines of code each time. It's all built in the macro, just means you just need to type in, well, in this case, ants or ants line, and you get all those code uh, automatically running in the background for you.